go. Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. We have returned. It's League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. And the beauty, going through the World Championship, previewing it as you always get the sneak in. There's always a little bit of off-season news, off-season drama. And unfortunately for the LCS, uh, they're often... The wrong kind of drama, and this time it's all about the super team that flopped. We've already talked about Jojo Pyun potentially being fired from Cloud9. Now the latest from Sheep Esports saying Berserker is not likely to return to the team next year, even though he's got another year on his contract. He apparently has asked the team to leave, a.k.a. get me the hell out of here. <laughs> Oh no, the end of the Berserker Saga era of Cloud9 is quickly approaching us. As you laid out, this is that weird period of time before Worlds where you do start to trickle in, get a little bit of off-season rumors and news, start to form up and get into the you know uh, public opinion out there. And for something like this, for Cloud9 and the LCS fans, if you're hearing news early, it's bad news bears is the way things go. And obviously, I think people were kind of expecting this. Obviously, Berserker has not been shying away from his frustrations with the team, uh, not going to Worlds, him, you know, just the level of the team. Not even just this split, going back to spring, even at times in 2023. So the question number one is, of course, what is Cloud9 going to look like without JoJo and Berserker probably going more budget conscious, a little lower cost roster? And where does Berserker go? Because when you're talking about work ethic, taking stuff seriously, get out the LCS if, if that's what he's looking for. The only way I see him staying in North America is if maybe Team Liquid underperforms at the World Championship. He slides into Jan's spot. They replace Umpty with a domestic jungler. That's the only way I see him staying in NA. I think that's a possibility. I think a lot of people are excited about that as a theory of where he might be able to line up and stay in the LCS, stay for North America and be that top tier ADC for the region. I think most likely the option is that he is going to go elsewhere, whether that elsewhere is going over to the LEC, joining on a squad like Fnatic or something like that, going to the LPL, cashing in, getting on a, a spot over there or going back home, going to the LCK, because I think that you're going to lay it out for us. There are a heck of a lot of openings in the LCK heading into next year, and you better believe an ADC at the quality like Berserker and one that is still on path to continue improving in his career is going to be in hot demand for those squads. Yeah, and I know, you know, is he him? He hasn't been at that MVP level in 2024, but listen, a lot of that is probably the environment, what the team is. If he's back home in the LCK, he can still be on a high-tier playoff team in the LCK, absolutely. And yeah, you might be saying, well, you've got Pays, Guma, Viper. He's not going into any of these spots, but the only AD carry in the LCK with the contract through to 2025 is aiming on D+. Now, a guy like Guma is probably the future of T1, probably going to be coming back. You would say, of course, Pays isn't going to leave Gen G, but Gen G's roster is absolutely stacked. There's no way they're going to be able to afford all of them in 2025. Pays is likely to get paid a big chunk of change wherever he ends up. And then, of course, Deft is leaving KT. I know they have a hyped-up challenger AD carry, but... I don't think there's going to be any shortage of options if he does go back to the LCK. He needs to be careful to understand that, yes, you might be the number one biggest fish for the LCS, being that opportunity and everything else. Globally, you're going to have to deal with the mega whale shark that's out there, like ruler circling around in these free agent pools that you're going to be finding selves. So it's a little bit more of an interesting conversation, but it absolutely is one that you get the idea, and we've known this for the last year and a half or so that Berserker wasn't happy with the situation with Cloud9, whether that was, uh, you know, uh, external factors are strictly about just the performance. The results that ended up piling up at the end of the day weren't the ones that he expected. He was promised. He was told you were going to be able to achieve with this organization here in the LCS. 
I got a good chance that unless we get a wild card where yes, as you laid out, Team Liquid has an opportunity or say 100 Thieves decides to make a crazy splash, go all in on that money for bringing in Berserker and saying, hey, you're already here in North America. You've already become you know, comfortable. You've already gone through all the troubles of settling in. Why do that somewhere else, man? Just keep staying here type of thing. That is probably your only you know, long shot angle if you are the LCS to get someone like Berserker to stay. And I mean, again, it's it's mostly probably to do with culture, work that work ethic that's going to be his decision. He might rather be on a middle tier LCK team than a, what's supposed to be guaranteed world spot in the LCS. Cloud9 wasn't so guaranteed in the end. Uh, going forward now. What about Thanatos for Cloud9? I feel the worst for this guy. He comes over for one split as this incredibly hyped up rookie and really through no shortcomings of his own, I feel like this split has probably actually hurt his stock in terms of getting promoted back in the LCK or just staying within the LCS. It is an unfortunate uh, side effect, I think, of what's going on in one of these ones for the future of this roster. Because again, Thanatos contracted through 2026 now say the same things about jojo pion and berserker they were contracted through they get cut at any time so absolutely that certainly can change is one of the things to keep track of but there were a lot of things that happened outside of just berserker that were brought in to help uh, for thanatos talking about reaper part of bringing him in was for thanatos uh, and and what he was going to bring for him in the practice structure and everything He's still an incredibly young player and someone that still needs that proper development and structure and growth to have that happen. I think he'll be questioning whether Cloud9 is the place for that. Reaper and, and the rest of the staff are going to have to show him that that is what's going to be happening. If they go full budget, right? If that is the scale back, if it's a hey, cut Jojo Pion, cut Berserker, let's bring in just, just young talent type of thing. I don't know if that's where uh, what Thanatos signed up for, where he wants to be, what type of environment he thought he was going to be getting with Cloud9. He might be calling D plus again and say, uh, can you get me that promotion for 2025, actually? Uh, bring me back. And honestly, they should probably still be open to that because this guy, you know, wasn't fully unlocked with Cloud9, but absolutely still has an incredibly high skill ceiling in terms of top laners. So this is a full preview for maybe what 2025 is going to look like for Cloud9. What 2025 is going to look like as a region in the Americas. We're getting a little preview with the Americas Challengers Tournament going on, sneaking it in right before Worlds actually kicks off. This is the Tier 2 NACL teams, the CB Lull Academy and LLA Academy teams. We got two from each going head to head to head. And Dragon Steel, fresh off of 3 0 wing the NACL Summer Finals, feeling puffing out the chest, feeling good, talking a lot of trash about Brazil, that they're not going to have a chance, even though they're playing in Brazil, and they proceed to be eliminated in the first round, dropping a game to the NACL team. They just threw out in the finals and an academy team out of Brazil. So maybe don't be disrespecting the CP ball so much. There's the alternate universe theory, and that one tells me that there is uh, you know, at least one universe out there. We're talking trash like that pays off for the LCS. And they do succeed. But just like any other top seeded LCS type squad talking trash like that, here comes the NACL to prove that it's not just our top tier region that can flunk it out. It is our developmental scene as well. Yes, anybody I think who had somewhat of a reasonable level of respect and understanding for what was going on in the global scene and the other regions as well and not just that top tier in the other regions would have said i wouldn't have been running my mouth if i am the nacl certainly you are in a stronger position you've got these resources all these things but you better believe the heart the skill is still there to check and challenge you from these other regions including brazil and we welcomed them on in of course with the way we're going for the americas and here we go we get our first taste of the brazil upset for for north american squads and uh, obviously this tournament's just starting. Again, round one, they were eliminated. So we're transitioning into the best of fives now. They're going to be implementing fearless draft as well into some of these best of fives. So it's a, it's a nice little appetizer to check out these games right before we fully gear up for uh, the world championship. And this, this is done by Saturday. The final's already done for this little mini tournament. 
a quick, quick and easy, just like that, and absolutely one where you can get that chance. Tune in, catch some games on your lunch break, whatever it's going to be type of thing. You know that this is going to be here. Nice little appetizer before you get into some of these other games that we're going to get for Worlds. Like to see this from Riot Games, like to see this from the NACL, you know, Brazilian minor region stepping on in. This is a good event to get yourself warmed up and maybe get a little bit more familiar with some of these type of matches that we will see as we get into next year's America's LCS Fusion Hybrid. And hopefully, you know, maybe the implications how this plays out should weigh in Riot's decision for who that rotating guest spot is going to be for that inaugural split in 2025. But either way, a couple glimpses of what the next year is going to look like. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Wonderful people, as always. Thank you so much for hanging out and supporting. We will catch you on that flippity flip.